So many people are up in arms about the way 13 Reasons Why, quote unquote, romanticized self-harm. But in this video, I'm gonna explain why Sky is actually the best character and how she was so well-written. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And do me a favor, this is the first video I'm actually doing on self-harm. So please, please, please share this video because this is a topic that we don't talk about enough and this video might be able to help somebody that you know who might actually be self-harming and you don't even realize it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get this out of the way with a real quick rant. Everybody who's being all morally outraged about how this show romanticized self-harm, you need to relax, calm down, take a step back and really look at what's happening. In this show, not once, not once, not only did they not show her self-harming herself, but they didn't even show her scars. And especially, especially because some of your favorite bands talk about mental illness and romanticize this all the time. Look at Linkin Park, amazing band, and they talk about the struggles of mental illness constantly. Many of their fans talk about how much the music actually helped them because they didn't feel so alone anymore. So unless you're gonna be morally outraged about this whole idea of the tortured artist, you need to just stop, okay? So in this 13 Reasons Why season two review, like I'm gonna explain how the show writers did such an incredible job showing Sky's journey from self-harm to hitting rock bottom, to getting a diagnosis, and to recovering, okay? So there are gonna be some spoilers in here. First one, Sky self-harms, all right? I talked about it a little bit in my first impressions video, but anyways, Clay and Sky are now dating. Uh, Clay knows about Sky's self-harming behavior, and they kind of get into it. So there are some uh, conversations where they talk about how she was supposed to do other things instead of self-harming. One of them, they mentioned snapping a, a rubber band on your wrist. And another way to do this, if you know anybody who's self-harming, something uh, my girlfriend actually told me that they did at the psych ward is take a piece of ice with some red food coloring and putting it over uh, where you would normally self-harm. This sometimes helps relax the brain when people wanna get into this behavior. So why do people self-harm? There's a, there's a couple reasons, actually there's a lot of reasons. I'm gonna talk about two major ones. One of them is to feel something, okay? Uh, one of the symptoms of depression is numbness. So sometimes people self-harm to feel, okay? And something that I've been meaning to make a whole video on, but I'm just gonna touch on it real quick. Some people actually get uh, dopamine and endorphins when they do self-harming behavior. So they've actually done some studies where the drug naltrexone, the non-narcotic medication. I don't know why I did air quotes. It is not a narcotic medication. This is a dopamine blocker. It helps some people who are searching for that dopamine hit from self-harming. Other people self-harm as a way of punishing themselves or they do it to not feel their emotions. When they're dealing with like this really bad emotional struggle, sometimes the self-harm can actually take their attention off of it, all right? So this is a big deal and it's, it's actually a really rampant issue in like the teenager community. So we need to talk about it and I think the show did such a great job of showing recovery from it. So what happens is, is that Sky actually hits a rock bottom, all right? She went to go cut and she must have, they didn't explain it, but she must have hit like an artery or something like that. And she had to go to the hospital. She was hospitalized, all right? And <clears throat> Clay goes and he tries to talk to her, all this other stuff. And Sky is like trying to break it off with him. So by the way, if any of you out there are somebody who is dating or in love with somebody who struggles with mental illness, like Clay is a perfect example of what not to do. So at one point, uh, Clay goes to visit Sky at the hospital and she's gone and he's freaking out, he's blowing up her phone and the nurse ends up telling him like, listen, I can't tell you where she is. I get this because I work in the field and it's a HIPAA violation. But he was, the nurse was very vague and he's like, listen, she's in a great program, she's gonna get better, all right? So while she's there, Clay is blowing up her phone, all right? Listen up, everybody. Whether it's rehab or some kind of uh, mental health facility, typically there is a blackout period where you cannot talk to anybody, all right? And there's a real good reason for that. You really need some time to focus on yourself with all, without all of the outside noise, all right? So Clay is phone bombing her, and if he had been educated about this, he would have known why she wasn't answering the phone. Anyways, Clay finally hears from her and he goes to go visit her 
and they're talking and she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, all right? So I will put some links up in the info card. I've had two guests, Kim Charlson and Bipolar Pug, Okay, but uh, they both did videos on having bipolar disorder. Check them out if you wanna learn a little bit more about that. But Sky talks about this relief she got from just like actually getting a diagnosis and how they're giving her medications. And, and Clay, he says something that I actually hear a lot from uh, family members and friends or loved ones um, of people getting on mental health medications. They're worried this person's gonna change. Listen up very carefully. Like Sky is so focused on her recovery. She's like, yo, it doesn't matter if it changed, like I need to change. Like, do you understand what I was doing? Like, it's a major issue. Sometimes the people in your life, they don't want you to get better because they fear maybe if you get better, you won't love them anymore, all right? So, but Sky talks about the sense of relief that she gets from actually understanding what's going on with her bipolar, right? These these ups, these downs, she makes a joke about how she tried to do something with Clay underneath the table while they were uh, eating dinner with his parents. But lastly, lastly, Sky ends up breaking it off with Clay because she's moving away to focus on herself and her mental health. And Clay doesn't want her to leave. He loves her and it's understandable. But like with anything, when it comes to your recovery and something I try to beat into your head on a regular basis, Sky said that her recovery has to come first, you know? And eventually Clay let go. But this is so important. I see so many people who don't do this. They, you know, Sky and Clay were dating for five months and they're teenagers. And people are like, no, no, I'm not gonna focus on myself. I need to date you, we're gonna get married and all this other stuff. For any of you watching this who are like 20 years old or older, like think about how in love you were with your high school boyfriend or girlfriend and how you don't even think about them anymore, right? So it was really admirable how Sky was willing to focus on her own mental health. And that's why, that's why I am so sick of people saying that they romanticize self-harm. Like this was perfectly done. This was perfectly done. I would almost encourage more people to watch this show just for Sky's character development, all right? Like if more people saw that and they could relate to that and realize what they needed to do to get well, it would be amazing, all right? I, I might do another video about like the moral outrage around 13 Reasons Why because I 1000% disagree. But anyways, anyways, do me a favor, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you thought about Sky's character development in 13 Reasons Why season two, okay? And again, like I said, um, please share this video because I did throw in some tips for people who do self-harm or if you're somebody who has struggled with self-harm in the past or currently are, maybe share this with other people so they understand it just a little bit better, okay? But Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental health. Make sure you click that little round subscribe button right there. If you wanna check out some other videos on this channel, click or tap on one of those thumbnails, all right? So thanks again so, so much for watching. Decrease the stigma, and I will see you next time.